I do plan to do a, a show on that uh, from the perspective of um, what kind of legal risks do you run if you decide to be an intervener in what you believe to be an active shooter event? Is it zero right. or are there legal risks that you run? Because they're, they're low, but they're not zero, folks, and you want to be aware of that. Now, for example, I don't know, if, does anybody know how many hits that Indianapolis shooter got on the bad guy? Because he was firing, apparently, it's reported from 40 yards away. I'm a guy who's fired well over 100,000 rounds through handguns in my life uh, because I was a very active competitive shooter with handguns for a very long period of time. 40 yards is a damn long <laughs> shot with it a is handgun. Very long shot for a handgun, yeah. Uh, to get sufficient hits to terminate a threat. Um, now, I know, or at least it's reported, he fired 10 rounds. I would be shocked if anybody got 10 hits with 10 rounds at 40 yards. I mean, that would be world-class competitive shooting. You're going to meet my friend Chris. He could do it. Yeah. Well, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but I'm but wondering, it's, it is high-level stuff. That's not easy. I mean, I can't hit. Well, I'm, I'm pretty good. But, I mean, I usually, when I practice handgun shooting, I usually practice within 10 yards. Because sure. if you're That's shooting further than happen. 10 yards of handgun, you're probably not shouldn't be shooting because that that's far enough away. I mean, you got to be careful. Those long range shots, those are rifle shots, right? Right. But, now, the but shooter, the what you're saying is rifle. true in a self-defense scenario, because right. if it's more than 10 yards, the problem, unless the other person's also armed with a gun, but absent that it's probably not a self-defense situation, but defense of others, it's not uncommon to have these long distance shots because the defender, the intervener, is seeing an event that's happening at some distance where innocent people are being victimized by a bad actor with a gun. And so they're compelled to take the shot in defense of others at a relatively long uh, distance. As did the what shooter, happened here. did the, the mall shooter guy, was he armed with a rifle? No, he was armed. Well, the bad guy was armed with a rifle. Bad guy yeah, had a AR. rifle. Yep. Which, by the way, folks, should be a horrifying thing to contemplate. Uh, going to a gunfight where you're armed with a, a nine millimeter Glock pistol uh, as this. Uh, intervener was in indianapolis and the bad guy's armed with an ar yeah, uh, if that I mean, bad guy knows how to use his ar and he's aware you exist and you're trying to stop him listen my, my 13 year old daughter can use an ar and hit a head at 100 yards all day long without yeah. any effort at all that's the rifle scary is the weapon it's definitely the one you want to be you want to have the rifle in those situations for yeah. sure uh, so I, I am going to talk about that case because, for example, here, uh, let's assume he he got two hits on the bad guy, which was beautiful. That's amazing shooting. Two out of 10 at 40 yards, sufficiently center mass to stop the threat, neutralize the threat. That is unbelievably great performance. It also means eight misses. Uh, and, you know, it, presumably a crowded mall. Where are those rounds going? Because bullets don't miss. They keep going until they hit something, right? Now, is that still defensible conduct? Absolutely. I'm not saying it's not defensible, but we can talk about the, the legal doctrines that would make that legally defensible, even though you're arguably creating risk to innocent people. And yes, it is different when the police do it, folks. I, it, shouldn't it shouldn't be. be. It shouldn't be. But Every law I've read doesn't distinguish. Yeah. No, it's it, the black letter law makes no distinction, but for for whatever reason, we tend to treat the uh, as a practical matter, the uh, police misses with tremendous generosity because they miss a lot, <laughs> even at incredibly close ranges. Uh, please, I always laugh when I hear the gun control community say, well, like, people with concealed carry permits should have to meet police standards. I'm always like, do you know what police standards are? <laughs> because they're, they're really low. And they're, 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 they're well, I advise, it's amazing doing depositions of police officers and how little they know about firearms. Not all, but I've interviewed some cops. They don't know anything about firearms. They don't know how to shoot them. They don't know how they work. It's like they have to get through the minimum qualification. And, you know, in all honesty, good police work usually does not involve a firearm. Usually they're taking reports, they're arresting people. There's, you know, the use, a lot of cops go through their entire career and never have to fire their weapons. So um, so I'm not condemning. I'm just saying that it, it's funny because I'm kind of a gun guy and I ask them questions. They're like, I don't know that. <laughs> 